Okay, so 3.8 is called Locatel's Rule. And Locatel's Rule will be able to be used on previous limit problems that you guys have used. However, most of these were avoided um, and you just didn't even realize it. But warning, if you get any of these forms, and there's seven different indeterminate forms, okay? So indeterminate, um, I briefly mentioned it in the notes back in the limits section. Indeterminate is a fancy word for basically saying the real value is hidden by some al further algebraic manipulation that needs to be completed. Um, the most common indeterminate forms are going to be zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Now, everybody thinks, well, isn't that just one or infinity or zero? But look, even zero times infinity is not equal to zero. Infinity minus infinity, because remember, that's still an idea. So it might be like a really large value subtracting a value that's not as large. Um, zero to the zero, one to the zero power. So by definition, one to any power except infinity is equal to one, but it doesn't apply to infinity and infinity to the zero power. So um, all of these are considered indeterminate. And so what happens is some of these forms, which are actually functions, um, it can involve some pretty extensive or creative algebraic manipulation. There's conjugate strategies, um, there's rewriting it as fractions, but that's your uh, first idea. So on the AP exam, I know this is a lot of information, on the AP exam, they typically keep these pretty simple. It's going to be typically one of the first two types. The other types do exist. I have some of them on your homework, some of them in your notes, um, just to kind of give you an idea of, well, how would I even do that? And so you can kind of start to see how creative or clever you might need to be. So L'Hopital's rule, the way it works is because you're looking at a limit, remember you want the y value um, that it's approaching. If you have a ratio where f of x is divided by g of x, then you're really comparing how those functions, their rates grow with respect to each other. So since what we're doing is comparing their rates, that's why we can really apply their derivatives. So what this says, L'Hopital's rule, he discovered this, that if you have an indeterminate form to start with, and that's super important, so it just can't be any fraction, then if it's indeterminate, you can compare their derivatives because that's their rates. Then you want to evaluate your limit. If it's indeterminate again, you're going to keep repeating. Take its derivative, so it would be the second derivatives, and compare. You stop doing L'Hopital's rule once you actually get like 0 over 5 or 6 over 2. Um, so once you don't get an indeterminate value, one of those forms, after you've evaluated the limit, then that means you're done with the limit, okay? So when you are given one of these other five forms, and actually it's really these two, um, you want to try to write them as fractions. We might have to use, for these three, you're going to use log properties, which is nobody's favorite, okay? Um, so we can do a little bit of manipulation, but I don't have all seven forms because really it's just three different types. A fraction, two things being multiplied or um, subtracted, and then exponentials. All right. Um, I have a little note here because some people, and it's not a typo, um, so I have a little history included on L'Hopital with, I couldn't make that little symbol because that's in Google um, Docs, uh, L'Hopital or L'Hospital, which is pronounced L'Hopital's, um, about the spelling and why you see both and why even on videos and on the internet, you still see both of them, okay? So they're both Fine. All right, so let's look at example number one. So what I want to do is we want to do the informal substitution. So let's say if I did, and so you have to remember about, okay, natural log of infinity. What's the natural log of infinity? So you kind of had to remember the graph. The graph had an asymptote and then it did keep getting bigger, just not at a big rate, fast. 
So this would be infinity on top, and then infinity squared is infinity. So we have infinity over infinity, which is indeterminate, okay? And you've never actually had that before because you wouldn't have been able to do it. So what this says is I still have my limit, but now I can take the derivatives separately, okay? So it's not a quotient rule derivative. So the derivative natural log is 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside. And t squared is a power rule, so 2t. All right? So now we want to evaluate each limit separately. So we would have 3 over infinity, which remember, a small number over a really large number, that goes to 0. And then 2 times infinity is infinity. So now this time, 0 over infinity, let's look, is that indeterminate? No, it's not. So if you have 0 over infinity, you can evaluate that. You just get 0. All right, so you do have to remember your derivatives. You take them separately. Um, you might get lucky if you do a derivative incorrectly, but um, these would be multiple choice questions on an AP exam. If you saw it, it would be one multiple choice question, okay, out of like the 40 multiple choice questions there. Are. Uh, let's look at number two. So negative infinity. Well, negative infinity squared is infinity. And then e to the 1 plus infinity is infinity. And e to the infinity is also infinity. So it's infinity over infinity. So that's indeterminate. So we get the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And then we're going to take the derivatives. So power rule. This was e to the u times the derivative of the exponent, which is negative 1. And then we're going to try to evaluate this again. So 2 times negative infinity is negative infinity. And then e to the infinity times negative 1 is negative infinity. And so you get infinity over infinity. So this is indeterminate. So that means we need to do the derivatives again. So we get the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Uh, power rule, we just get 2. And then we had negative 1 e to the u times the derivative of the inside again. So two negatives make a positive. If I evaluated my limit, I would get 2 on top. And then e to the infinity is infinity. So once again, this is not indeterminate anymore. So a really small number over a really large number is 0. Now, it does end up being 0 a lot, um, but not all the time. OK, so those would be the two um, types that I would expect on an AP exam. They're pretty quick, uh, not super time consuming, not super difficult, not tricky, straightforward. All right, let's look at example 3. Now, example number three, this does say um, zero from above because of the natural log restriction. So remember, natural log, just as a review, we can't take the natural log of zero, but I can take really small values to the right of it. So that's why we have that limit there. So for all uh, intensive purposes, I can substitute zero here. And then the natural log of four times zero would be... See, it would be like down there, so it would be negative infinity. So if we have 0 times infinity, I know it's not marked here, but it's the same, so that would be indeterminate, okay? The answer is not necessarily 0. So I'm going to put a little question up here and say, like, will it really end up being 0? Could we have really saved ourselves some time? I don't know. So the next thing is, well, how do I actually do a product? You don't do a product rule. What we want to do we want to get a ratio, okay? So you want to try to get, um, let's not say get, try to rewrite as a ratio, a fraction, okay? Um, and it usually only takes once. 
um, you have two different functions. And so depending on the function depends on which one you're going to play with. So I still have my limit. W is still going zero from above. I need to pick one of them to write as a reciprocal. So I think the W squared is going to be easier. I can really write that as one over. So like if we think of that over one, one over W squared. Right? Because really on the side, if I did one, and then if I multiply by the reciprocal, I get W2 over one, and I get W squared. So I haven't changed my function. So I need to rewrite one of them as one over the reciprocal. And then times this natural log of 4W squared. Okay, and you'll only have to see this once because then you'll be able to skip to my next step. So what happens is when you multiply, you just multiply straight across. So I'm really looking at the limit of W approaching zero of the natural log of 4w squared all over 1 over w squared, okay? And so now I've written it as a ratio. I haven't changed my original function though. If I simplified this, I would still get what, what I started with. So what we wanna do is we want to try and see if this is indeterminate, which it is because it's the same. So we can go ahead and do our derivatives. I'm going to rewrite this as my power though, okay? So on my derivative, if I do L'Hopital's rule, I get limit as w approaches zero, and this is, I'm going to write my fraction. So it's one over the inside times the derivative of the inside. And I know I can reduce, but I'm going to wait. This one's going to be a power rule, so I get bring it down and subtract one. Now we do want to rewrite these because we are evaluating them. So let's reduce, I get two and that reduces, so two over W on top. And then this would be negative two over W cubed and it's still our limit. So now if we plug in zero from above, I would have two I'll write it down here. I would have two over some really small number, like 0.01, two over 0 0.001, two over 0 0.0001. And so what happens is remember, as we have a large number two over a super small number, that's going to infinity. <laughs> And then we're going to try this one. So zero from above, same thing. I have negative two. And then we have that really small number, but cubed. So that's even smaller. So that ends up being negative infinity. So it's still infinity over infinity. It doesn't matter if one of them is positive or negative. So... We want to do L'Hopital's rule, or really, because I end up with two fractions, see how I don't have a log anymore? I can clean that up. So we get the limit as W approaches zero from above, and I have two over W, and then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. W cubed over negative two, which is, that crosses out, so it's negative w squared, well now through our algebraic manipulation, this is not indeterminate anymore because it's like it's over one, okay? So if I just plug in zero from above, we know that that's a really small decimal. or I can plug in zero because it's not undefined anymore. And so I get negative zero squared, which is zero. Now, some people said, remember how we wrote that little note? Is it really gonna be zero? Yeah, is there a way that we would be able to do this and it wouldn't be zero? Oh, I'm sure, okay. 
That was a long one. All right, example number four. 